If you need any Xbox or PlayStation codes or anything gaming related, check the referral links down in the description. They'll take you to G2A.com. They already have a discount on most of their goods already, and with the code CHES at checkout, you can get yourself an extra 3% off as well. Hey guys, how's it going? Chez back again and welcome to episode number 37 of the Inter Milan career mode here on FIFA 15. We start with that away game against Bromby in the Europa League. Obviously Daniel Agger's current side and he will be in the starting lineup as well. Formerly of Liverpool of course, the uh, Danish defender. And we currently sit top of the Europa League group after our win over PAOK in the opening game of this particular European competition. Of course we are current holders of the uh, Europa League. We did win it last year, unfortunately not able to qualify for the Champions League via a league finish last year or via the new rule that uh, the winners of the Europa League automatically qualify for the next year's Champions League which is a new rule brought in by FIFA or by UEFA for uh, this next upcoming season but obviously in FIFA at present it uh, isn't in the game. Hopefully it will be for FIFA 16. I'm not too sure. It should be if they want to follow the uh, official rulings of uh, the game as it's uh, you know dictated by the uh, by the rule makers but we'll have to wait and see. Uh, we're trying to get ourselves off to a decent start here but we we uh, unfortunately have the man on the line to block the effort as we uh, had it deflect to Dybala from a good save by the goalkeeper. Couldn't quite squeeze it in and get it past the defender. Very good defending from them with the man back on the line. Trying though to uh, force the issue if we possibly could in the opening 15 minutes or so. Cavanda just doesn't give up completely hounds the defender until he gets it off him although unfortunately the header was off target so we're definitely on top in this one we were expecting to be on top in this one just couldn't find a way through in that first half the second half however was going to be a different story Marco Sal brilliant pace to get around the outside here nice turn inside thought about playing it off to someone and eventually I was kind of forced to do so Tide with a good shot drops to Dybala and he almost missed that it was headed towards the far bottom corner another foot or so to the right hand side it would have gone the wrong side of the post again but once once we got that first, Bromby kind of fell apart, unfortunately, for them. Good strength by Hugo Campagnaro to win the ball back there. Threads through Marco Sal. Lovely ball across to Dybala. Obviously left-footed, so trying to get it back onto that side with a lovely fake shot to completely sell the defender. Then it was a case of a simple, uh, slotted, tidy, finesse shot finish into the bottom corner to make it 2-0. And then with 15 or just over 15 minutes to go, Dybala involved again into Marco Sal. Bit of space for uh, Safir Taider pushing forward here. Not used to being this far up the pitch and I think that's his first goal for me since coming back from on loan in the first season. Disappointed with the goalkeeper though, or at least the Bromby manager would have been. A uh, very, very poor attempt at a save, but Tide has actually been very, very effective for us in this uh, second season so far. So is Marco Sal and he's been called upon. Obviously we've had Rodrigo drafted in. Cavanda takes it round the goalkeeper and gets brought down. A clear penalty. You can't get much more clear cut than that. Took it around the keeper. He swiped his legs. A definite, definite yellow card. Marco Sal's the man to step up to take the pen. Keeper gets something on it, but he can't keep it out. It goes into the back of the net and after a very tough first half uh, a simple 4-0 win in the end so uh, we will continue to be top of the group with six points from six and uh, hopefully we can continue to stay to stay top of Serie A as well I almost said La Liga then with uh, a game here away from home against Fiorentina we had two away games yesterday and we're able to pick up good results but Fiorentina weirdly sit down in 17th they've only lost two games this season but they've drawn the other three yet to pick up a victory so hopefully we'll be able to deny them the opportunity to do that in this game as well and be able to continue our 100% run so far. They're playing a three... I guess a 3-5-2 with two very deep uh, central midfielders in uh, Salifu and obviously Borja Vallejo or Borja Vallejo instead as well. But uh, they got to actually Lorenzo Insigne in their starting lineup, a player that obviously in real life is still at Napoli, but uh, is a decent prospect in uh, real life and obviously a decent prospect in FIFA and Football Manager, that said, as well. Obviously quite small. Here he is on the ball, in fact, Lorenzo Insigne, going for a nice little run. Not the strongest, but if you give him too much space, he's going to punish you he's got the dribbling to do that and then the ability to power the ball into the back of the net in such a fashion that we find ourselves going 1-0 down after just eight minutes from the kickoff though as you can see trying to work ourselves an opportunity immediately to get back on level terms Rodrigo through the gap to Romero tries to shot from distance and that was headed towards the top corner it needed that very good save from Nato to keep it out good save from him to uh, to main maintain their 1-0 advantage try and get a goal from the resulting corner though Torre again from distance and for a second time in short succession Nato with another good save to push it away from going into the corner to keep it at 1-0 we head into the second half in fact by the time
the time the next chances came. Similar to how the uh, the game against Bromby was. Very, very tough first half. This time, though, we ended up going behind. Were we going to be able to get ourselves back into the game the same way we did against Bromby in the second period? We actually found ourselves on the defensive there as Leno made a good save, a very, ne uh, very necessary save in that situation as well. And we're going to try and get ourselves a goal back here into Freddie Green. Lovely turn. Surely it's just a case of putting it into the back of the net. A wonderful, wonderful, strong left arm from NATO there to keep us out into the 89th minute. And it's Fiorentina on the attack here at the end. Babacar and uh, Mattia Fernandez linking up. Mario Gomez squeezes it to Joaquin. Headed towards the bottom corner. Needed saving from Leno and he almost palmed that straight to the waiting, uh, waiting Fiorentina striker. So despite a 100% uh, record in all competitions to this point so far in the season, there's our first defeat thanks to that early goal from Lorenzo Insigne was definitely a goal worthy of winning a game. I was just disappointed not to have been able to get myself back into it. So I kind of wanted to punish Pescara as we headed into this third and final game of the episode to kind of soothe my ego after having played very good game against Fiorentina and lost my 100% record. As you can see, having to start a uh, rotation side, though, this game actually came just two days after the game against Fiorentina, which was very much a pain in the backside. But we'll try our best. Obviously, the rotation side, we've improved the quality in depth in the squad from last year to this year. So we should be able to, uh, you know, improve our results when we have the fixture congestion that we're experiencing currently. So I was hoping to, uh, obviously, Pescara have come up from uh, Serie B last year as well so I wanted to show off our dominance here in this game if we possibly could obviously last year when we played a promoted side in uh, Palermo early on in the season we were able to get ourselves a 6-0 or 6-1 victory this one though was going to be a little bit more difficult as you can see we could save there and then they uh, put in a, a really heroic uh, defensive block to stop Dybala from putting it into an empty net and again Dybala here denied by the woodwork after a good save by the goalkeeper for a second time we get a corner here that's palmed out Brozovic with a shot deflected off the defender again they're just throwing absolutely everybody in front of the ball whenever it was in front of their goal here Pescara tied there with the corner this time there and with a powerful header into the back of the net we do eventually take a 1-0 lead in the 33rd minute and that actually was a very very good header from Ranocchio take nothing away from that doesn't find himself in the first team that often now with all of the fantastic defensive signings that we've made but uh, when he does play he actually is being quite solid for me so if he if anyone in the first team makes a mistake or he continues to to impress in these rotation games he may find himself having a chance in the first team in a bigger game rather than having to play against the likes of Pescara maybe we can play him against you know Roma or Juventus or someone like that but uh, trying to get a second here but a good save again by the goalkeeper well held we'll have another corner obviously scored from one earlier on in this episode or in this game in fact and trying to do so again here actually hitting the inside of the post with a brilliant header really unfortunate not to be able to guide it properly into that far top corner and uh, we can't quite get a second goal to this stage but we'll continue to try I wasn't necessarily where that initial pass was meant to go, but we did a well, we were able to recover the ball. Sal going for the uh, extravagant, and actually that wasn't far away. A shot from 40 yards. We had 20 shots, as you can see in that game, 13 on target, and only the one goal. Credit to Pescara for defending extremely well all throughout that particular game and we were only able to score the one but it was the only one that we needed to get the win so we do bounce back from the defeat to Fiorentina and uh, fortunately Sassuolo who were yesterday the only other side to remain undefeated have also lost a game in today's episode so we do still sit top of the table on goal difference so delighted with that Juve though are back to within two points of us now as are Lazio and Milan are only a further two points behind that and actually P uh, Palermo and Chievo Verona have a game in hand so uh, actually Palermo could come up level with Juventus and Lazio on points and be two points behind us should they win that game in hand so it is still extremely tight at the top but for now we still sit top of the pile so I'm quite happy to accept that but that will bring today's episode to a close guys thank you very much for watching of course there'll be a career mode road to glory episode later on tonight I'll be streaming on Twitch tonight as well so follow the Twitch channel links in the description down below and of course uh, follow me on Twitter as well to find out exactly what's going on with me throughout the day whether it be YouTube wise Twitch wise or just in general if you fancy a bit of a chit chat but so that's going to bring today to a cl uh, today's episode to a close thank you very much for watching guys follow all the links in the description and i'll see you next time